Hey there everybody, it's Fox with Foxio Plays on my Let's Play channel. We're back for episode number 8 of our Rifle Spear playthrough, Bloodborne. This is the PS4 version. You can tell because it's an exclusive for PS4. Duh. Alright, so when last we met, I was complaining about Vicara Emilia and how annoying she is. Well, I was mainly talking about the fact that uh, while I don't think the boss design is entirely terrible, I think there were some very bad decisions made in terms of her physical uh, looks. Basically, she's got this cloth that goes all over the place and makes it extremely difficult to tell what's going on. So in that regard, while she looks cool, and while I kind of like her design from an uh, aesthetic perspective, it just obscures your view and you can't tell where attacks are coming from. So yeah, in, in that sense, it was really a bad decision. Um, I don't know how else to put it. Right, goodbye. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to run straight up there, although I'm not 100% sure exactly where it was. I remember I just ran up some stairs. So, let's do that. Let's run upstairs. Uh-oh, wrong way, stupid. Wrong way, dummy! Ow! Jeez, dude. Chill out. Would all of you just chill out? I'm not looking for you. I'm looking for Vicar Emilia. Now, one thing I'm going to do is dodge that a little late but get lucky and just not get hit is you're gonna see my little interface uh graphic beer there i'm gonna turn my my headphones down and that way hopefully i won't talk so loud now when we get in here just be aware that unfortunately these boss fights the music gets pretty loud um i looked up some boss strategies although i think honestly this is just not a very good weapon why do i have these equipped i shouldn't have those equipped all right um we should have faster stamina regen without those. But yeah, this is not the best weapon in the game for a variety of reasons. Uh, it's got some cool features, but it's got some major limitations. One of which is that the thrust attacks are hard to hit some of these big enemies with because what you'll do is, with these big enemies that have like little legs and whatnot, you'll end up attacking to the side. And then this swipe is just a very, very short, has a very, very short attack range on it. So anyway... We'll go in here and do whatever it is that we do and hope for the best. I don't know if I can buy fire paper, so I'm a little reluctant to waste this stuff. But what I might try to do is toss an oil urn at her and then hit her with Molotov cocktails and also numbing mist so she can't heal. So let's see how this goes, guys. Good news is fire paper pops on your weapon fast, so yes! Watch. Oh, I can't put it on this, can I? Well, that sucks. Ow, that hurt. <laughs> this might be over before it begins. Oh, that was a delay. See, there was quite a delay on that that I wasn't expecting. Here's her shockwave. Nope. Oh, right in the face. Sorry about that, lady. You can see what I mean about the cloth, though. And then she screams like crazy, so it's just nuts. It's like, stop screaming! Stop screaming! Nice try, but I'm over here, stupid. Oh, that didn't work out for me. She does a lot of damage, too. See, it's hard for me to time those properly. Yeah, I can't use these. Oh, shoot. Well, that's that. Uh, I actually switched my weapon out. I switched my weapon out. There it is. Okay. Can I hit her now? No, not quite yet. I mean the visceral. Ow. We're hurting our hind legs, which is a good thing. Dang, that had a delay. See, these delays are also kind of annoying for me. I feel like they're unnecessary. They're just, they're just meant to trip you up, which, I don't know. I just feels frustrating constantly waiting for a little delay to dash.
I can't tell if that hit her or not. You see all the cloth right there? It made it nearly impossible to see her attack coming. I mean, I could see that one, obviously. Okay. And this is one of those things where they just keep coming at you and coming at you. You know how it is. Dark Souls 2. Alright. Yeah, this is not going well. I'm just not doing any damage is the problem. I mean, look at that microscopic <laughs> amount of damage I'm doing to her. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That does a little bit of damage. Oops. Didn't register my button press. Uh, I'm pretty sure that didn't hit me, but, you know, whatever. It's, it's What's done is done. She also does just so much damage that it's nearly impossible to uh, recover after getting hit a couple times. I mean, it just drains all your uh, blood vials to heal it up. I mean, look at the microscopic amount of damage I'm doing. I can barely see the bar move. And I had no idea what she did there because there was nothing but cloth all over my camera. So, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. It's just a huge issue where it's like, oh, cool, look at this design. And I'm like, no, no, that's actually a really bad idea, guys. But I guess no one took the time to tell the artist that they blew it. Are those my souls? Or did I already pick them up? I, th I already picked them up. Okay. I mean... You're supposed to attack her hind legs, but they won't let you lock on to that. And if you don't lock on... Shoot. There we go. If you can't lock on, you can't, um... You can't, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? You can't, uh... Dash. This is where they just go insane. Nuts. <laughs> Um, no, I dodged that, but whatever. We'll just have to accept whatever the game tells us. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, wow, that just, like, moved her entire body towards me. That was odd. That's to make sure she doesn't heal. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm so lucky she just missed. She just completely missed right in front of my face. Come on. Oh, wow. I just got lucky on that. I used a bunch of items, which feels kind of cheap. It's cheap, man. Salutations from a hunter. I'll try to normalize the audio. I always talk loud when I'm trying to talk over these extremely, extremely overly loud boss fights. Audio balance, man. Audio balance. Where's it at? It's not here. All right, today's drink of choice, which I couldn't even sip during that entire boss fight, is um, spearmint tea. Just a really cheap brand. I think it's called Bigelow. Did you buy it from any grocery store? I'm a, I love tea, I love drinking tea, but I'm not a connoisseur in the sense that I get expensive stuff or that I develop a taste for particular brands so much. This gives us a password for uh, another door that leads to a different area. Of course, we always skip the CGI cutscenes and we skip um, dialogue and all that stuff because you guys can look at that on your own. No reason for me to weigh down this playthrough with that stuff. Yeah, play, these playthroughs will be several episodes shorter just not watching cutscenes and not talking to all the NPCs and listening to dialogue. It, it, it just it shortens it a lot. And it's worth it, in my opinion. Oh, those loading screens are so nice now. I didn't cut anything, guys. Loading screens are actually reasonable now. Welcome home, good so people have asked me, am I going to go the arcane route with the rifle spear? I think I am. <laughs> because this rifle spear just isn't doing it for me. 
So I got to look that stuff up to see exactly what the arcane route is about. But in the meantime, let's do this. Let's get some endurance and then vitality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Um, we haven't locked anything from these. Uh, abandoned old workshop. Right, right. Yahar Ghoul will be one of those when uh, when we finally get it opened. Talk to Garmin. Just see if he drops us anything. Oh, I did that gesture by mistake. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, 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 yep. Are you going to give him anything? No. Okay, you're just going to talk like a loser. All right. Blood Gem Fortification. Um... Yeah, I'm going to look up the arcane thing. You guys can leave comments as well. Don't be afraid to leave a comment that you think has already been addressed, or even if you think it might be too late. Because someone posted a comment, they were like, well, I was going to talk about such and such, but it's probably too late in your playthrough by now. And it was too late, because I've already covered that area um, by the time, you know, by the time episode 2 was posted, episode 5 had already been recorded. But I can tell you that since, since we don't need... Since all we need are twin bloodstone shards for that, since we don't need the bloodstone shard, I'm going to actually start upgrading the pistol. I know I said I, I was going to swap this out for something else, but I think I might actually stick with it. I was going to go back to the blunderbuss, but then I realized I've, I've done that. I've done that, so let's do something new. Even if I have a few complaints about the pistol, let's give it a shot, you know? Um, I would much rather have, like, the Kirkhammer right now. Because, uh, yeah, this Rifle Spear is presenting quite a few issues, but um, I think in the long run, it's best if we just stick with what we started with, obviously, because I don't want to change the entire playthrough. I kind of want to buy Ludwig's rifle, but let's stick with the pistol. Let's save ourselves 10,000 souls and just start upgrading the pistol with the twin or the Bloodstone shards. Now, we'll save all the twin shards for our main weapon remember priority is upgrading your main weapon over all other things that's always been true in other souls games now this one i'm not 100 percent sure is it best to always upgrade your main weapon versus leveling that's always been true in the other souls games but is it true here who knows okay so we can get five fire papers for one no that's five is how many we have on us okay we can buy bloodstone shards so that's nice we got some armor available to us, but most, for the most part, other than a few things like your resistances to poison and uh, frenzy and whatnot, armor is mainly a cosmetic thing. Um, it's not going to make a big difference in, in terms of defense. It's not going to radically change anything. I've been told that all your defense values added together are then reduced to one-tenth of that or something like that. So let's say you have 200 defense points. That'll come up to 20 actual defense and, and gameplay. So... It's best to basically just equip the armor that you think looks cool, unless you want a specific resistance. So, um, let's do one quick run of Central Yarnum. I won't do this all the time, but I like to keep my blood vials stocked up. And it gives me a chance to drink my tea. Mmm, tea. Peppermint. Actually, it's spearmint. Sorry, that's my lame attempt to do Duke Nukem. That tea's alright. It's nothing special. But hey, neither am I. That's what my mom used to tell me. You're nothing special, son. I'm just joking. <laughs> Some people take my dry humor way too seriously. They're like, oh my gosh, you had such a horrible mother. I didn't. Um, okay, so I've got the Bloodborne Guide in front of me. That's what you'll hear me flipping around with. I'm not really following it step by step. However, I'm using it to kind of get an idea for... Um, Sorry, I'm adjusting my position in the chair here. I'm using it to get an idea for where to go when. And um, I'm noticing that it says to go to Old Yarnum here. And the boss of Old Yarnum. Did we already fight that boss? What was the boss of Old Yarnum? Oh, yeah, the Blood Star Beast. So we did that. I think this actually has us um, handling the uh, the Witch of, of Hemwick or Charnel or I don't know what it is. Some, witch of something. Um, but basically, I'm going to kind of follow the uh, path set out in this book for the most part. Father Gascoigne. Okay. And then after that, it's the healing... W hang on, hang on, hang on. Got to flip through it. Sorry, guys. I should have prepared this ahead of time. In the meantime, I'll get this thing moving. 
that does old yarn, which we've already done. I'm using little sticky notes to mark where I am, which is the thing I used to do when I was a teacher. Oh, look at that. I love how, like, they survive with that sliver of health. That happens a lot. Um, it fr it's, it's frustrated other people and uh, that I've seen um, talk about it as well. Cursed beast, I hate you. Yeah, well, I'm not too fond of you either, buddy. I heard somebody whisper something. Interesting. All right. So, oh, I should have done my blood bullet thing. Here we go. Um, yep, did you see that, guys? It just, it didn't seem to really do anything. It, it took away some of his health, but it didn't even appear to hit him, and it didn't cause him to stagger, and then his attack went right through me. So yeah, this game has some issues with that happening. Um, but it's nowhere near as bad as Dark Souls 2. Of course, someone pointed this out to me, and it's and it's it's not entirely true, but it's a valid point. It's not always an issue of comparison, and that's true. You can't just say, oh, this game is awesome because it's not as bad as Dark Souls 2. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just pointing out that this is better than Dark Souls 2, that, you know, comparatively, it's not as big an issue. Oh, I probably equipped the Hunter's Axe for handling this little spot right here. You can see it's not quite as effective. Uh-oh. Haha, losers. How do you like that? Fireball to the face. Oops. I'm not I'm used to the distance on the uh two-handed R2. Yeah, these guys can drop possibly blood vials, quicksilver bullets, and Molotov cocktails, and I think that's it. Oh yeah, I forgot, I got the rifle thingy. And I love how you can knock them out of their jumps. That's awesome. Um, because I don't remember being able to parry jump attacks in Dark Souls. I'm pretty sure you couldn't. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. As always, feel free to correct me if I say anything that's not correct. Just be nice. I mean, you don't have to be, like, super kid gloves delicate on me. I'm not that delicate, obviously. But just don't be, like, crude and rude and, you know, you know how it is. Don't, don't be typical internet troll. Uh-oh. Do you see why I have an issue with this? I mean, I got stuck with him just standing right in front of me. There's no reason that should have pinned me to the wall. That was ridiculous. And then the reach on his weapon is actually phantom. Some of it's phantom reach. It's it, 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 The reach of his weapon goes out further than the actual physicality of the weapon. That's a word I like to use. It's not fair. It's cheating. Alright, and then we'll go back. This run is now... What the... Oh, Henrik, eh? I wasn't ready for you. Ah, oh, shoot. Uh-oh, nope, nope. Sometimes a tr little trick I learned is you can shoot him. Oh, there she is. I was wondering when she would show up. Problem is, you can accidentally hit her, so you have to be careful. They move so fast, it's hard to target just, uh, I believe it's Henrik. <gasps> no, no, no! Oh my gosh, he powered it up. What a jerk. You can just watch her. She'll usually be okay on her own. Boom. How do you like that, Eileen? Last time, I thought Eileen was coming for me, because she was coming for him. He was behind me, and I didn't see him. So when she came towards me with her weapons out, I started to fight her. Fortunately, she has a, a, a little bit of built-in forgiveness. Most NPCs in the game have some built-in forgiveness. You can hit them quite a few times, and they'll still let it go. Oh, I knocked, uh, I knocked him out of it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Please give me Henrik's armor set. Nah, oh, darn it. wasn't necessary you have my we made oh the stupid accidental gestures i barely even moved my controller at all people are like don't stop shaking your controller i'm like uh, trust me guys i'm not shaking the controller believe me um i'm just holding the controller in my lap um my arms are resting on my thighs don't get too excited and that's it oh wow Okay, so they fixed the bug where your lamp breaks, or at least it didn't break this time. Like, in the previous playthroughs, it actually broke and wouldn't work, 
or the previous playthrough. Okay, so the next part in this guide is the Healing Church, and then after that is Hemwick Charnel Lane. I gotta figure out how to get there in the first place. Um, yeah, the, so that's gonna be an issue. Uh, I gotta figure out how to get there to Hemwick Charnel Lane. I don't remember, I've only played through this game once before. At the end of the Healing Workshop is um, nothing, I guess. The Healing Church Workshop doesn't show a boss at the end. Tower Bridge. Sorry, guys, I should have prepared this ahead of time. I'm doing this off the cuff. Can you tell? So, oh, this that's the um, abandoned old workshop. That's the, okay, I get it now. That's the uh, the place we went earlier. Apparently, we can get there by continuing to jump down that pathway we were at last time. So let's try that out. But first, Welcome. leveling is in order. Look at this. I, I, I'm barely moving. I promise you guys, I'm not shaking my controller. I'm not spasming. I'm just pressing the X button. That's all I'm... I'm just... And there we go. I mean, just look at this. It's ridiculous. Oh, I thought he was doing another gesture. Well, you did one. That's bad enough. So, where is Henrik's armor set? I should grab that. That's my favorite. Well, I used that last time, so I shouldn't grab that. Never mind. Don't want to use the same armor set again. I want to try to use different stuff in my playthrough. So, each playthrough, I'll try to use a different primary weapon, secondary weapon, and a uh, different uh, firearm to the best of my ability. But, uh, yeah, we shall see. So, as you saw earlier... Uh, you're able to make the bosses harder or, well, not harder, but you're able to make them a little easier by employing consumables. And uh, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, checking this. Oh, I've only got 38 blood vials out of 99. So, okay. Let's do another quick run. I'm sorry to take you guys through this. I think from now on when I do these runs, I'll cut them out for you. But I've got some stuff I want to talk about, so I'll leave this one in. And uh, I also want to try to figure out where the Hemwick Charnel Lane is, how to get there. Where are we coming from? So, to Cathedral Ward. So it's from the Cathedral Ward. Okay, I think I actually might know where it is. Um, yeah, you know, I think I might know where it is. I think I said that it was actually the spot that leads to the Hemwick Charnel Lane is actually uh, the spot that I said went to the Forbidden Woods. So I misspoke there. Um, some of you may have already corrected me by this point when I upload that video. Oh, I also told you guys I get to the comments, so I gotta bring that up and get to those comments and respond to your comments. I'll also be trying in the future to highlight positive comments that people leave, like actually show little screenshots of it, um, and then highlight and, and mention the person's name. If you really, really don't want me mentioning your comment, I guess you could say that at the end of your comment. You could leave a comment and say, P.S. Please don't give this comment a shout out or please don't mention this comment in your videos or something but I don't know why you'd want to do that why would you want to do that you want me to mention your comments okay I'm getting the hang of these weapons see I think I got hit before the game allowed me a chance to give input to respond that that actually could happen in some of the other souls games there are instances in which you could get hit immediately coming out of an animation before you had control of your character. It was a very, it was like a split second thing. It might have been like a 200 millisecond thing, but it still existed. Run over that, send the elevator back up, of course. I know one person has already complained saying that everyone already knows about this now, so I don't need to keep doing it. But at the same time, I'm not just doing it for your sake. I'm doing it for my sake as well, because I'm actually getting vials from... Oh, oh, oh. I'm getting vials from this right now. Um, I'm not just doing it to show you guys. You know, I'm actually, like I said, getting vials right now for my playthrough. Because I need them. Desperately. I want to get used to the pistol, actually. Still feels very, very weird to be to be shooting firearms, especially larger firearms, with your uh, support hand, otherwise known as your weak hand or your off hand. Um, trust me, even though the blunderbuss is not actually a shotgun, it's the closest equivalent in modern 
terms is a shotgun. And I can tell you right now, guys, you would never, ever hold a primary weapon in your right hand, if that's your support, in your, in your strong hand, and try to shoot a shotgun in your support hand. Trust me, it wouldn't work. I mean, have, anyone who's shot a shotgun at all knows you don't do it one-handed with your support hand. But hey, you know, knock yourself out if, if, you, if that's what you want to do. I'm not going to stop you. Obviously. Okay, so Eileen's still standing here. Um, she'll move on at some point. And you really do want the Hunter of Hunter's Covenant from her, or the Oath, because it gives you a stamina regen effect, which, as some people pointed out, is like pretty much clearly superior to everything else the game offers. So, I mean, you're you're really at the point of its best, period, end of story. Um, and that's about all there is to it. So if you want the best uh, if you want the best oath benefit, then it really is the the uh, Hunter of Hunters Covenant. So this is episode um, eight. Let me go back to let's say episode one and look at some of these comments here. And I'll respond to a few as we roll through the video. Okay, let's go back to the Cathedral Ward and get a move on here. So people have commented on some excellent points. One person said that uh, I commented on my 101 temperature. And they said, you know, wouldn't that, wouldn't that kill you? Wouldn't that mean that you're essentially boiling? Of course, I'm talking in Fahrenheit. Uh, I live in America, the U.S. of A., so we still use the imperial system and, and Fahrenheit and all that good stuff. Um, actually, I think Fahrenheit's superior to Celsius in many ways because um, it has more graduations than than Celsius does. You know, the difference between 20 degrees Celsius and 21 degrees Celsius is much bigger than the difference between, like, 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 76. So, in that regard, Fahrenheit can be more precise. Now, I believe it's going to be this way. I'm pretty sure. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And life won't go on. Where's that one dude that was right there? There was always a guy standing right there. I guess things have changed since I killed the Amelia. It's become nighttime now. The sun has set. You'll notice that the uh, the lighting changes and the status of the sun. These guys can drop a uh, upgrade material that I need. I might actually go to Yahargul to get the upgrade materials. You know what? Let's do that. I need the upgrade materials. So, we don't have a ton of souls at the moment, so let's do what must be done, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Oh! No, stop! Oh no, I died. What a shame. That's terrible. That's awful. Oh well. So, Antonio BP on YouTube says... Hey, Fox, if you didn't know, there's a hidden weight system in the game. Yes, once I figured that out, which I actually figured out right before you posted that, but thank you for posting it. You would have let me know had I not picked it up from someone else. I Okay, so you wake up here, and you were dragged here in a sack. The short version of the CGI cutscene. So that's why I no longer keep secondaries equipped at all times. It appears to only be your armor and weapons and maybe something else, but... Um, Armor and weapons primarily. So if you're not really using your secondary a lot, don't have it equipped. Or just equip it as needed. Because the the weight system, these, these items do appear to have weight, but instead of weighing you down with equipment burden, what they do is slow down your stamina regen, according to my understanding. So in that regard, uh, it's probably best to equip as little as you need. Hello? That was weird. I was standing right on the body and it didn't want to indicate anything. So I learned from another uploader that if you equip the right gear with her, um, she'll recognize you as a church member and give you that. It's not much, but maybe she'll move on somewhere else, you know? So, oh yeah, the chapel. There we go. Okay, so that's done. Something I never did originally. Notice that these two have the exact same description and appear the exact same other than the picture. But the name is the same, but the stats are slightly different. 
Weird, huh? One's got a cape and one doesn't. They should really it should have a different name on it, um, just to differentiate it. Because at first I didn't even realize they were two different uh, pieces of gear. All right. Yahargul, one of the only areas in the game that has, I think it might even be the only area in the game that has background music playing throughout. But uh, just like the, um, gosh, what was that area called in Dark Souls that had music? Oh, I can't remember. The big, like, beach area. Anyway, it's the same style of music. It's very reserved. It's very kind of atmospheric. Um, it's very much background music. It doesn't come out in the foreground and, like, you know, really grab your attention so much. I don't have a great way of fighting these guys, and I certainly don't want to fight two at a time. They're extremely tough. I'm hoping to get some... Um, of these you know but it, it's it's not easy I'm gonna try though how was that not one I want to recount on that and they can do a variety of different attacks which all have different timings so that makes it even more frustrating trying to trying to interrupt them I was wondering if I could interrupt that this is where they get more powerful yeah Darn it. And he moves quicker and... Oh, does he get stuck there? Oh, this is so cheap. Oh my goodness. Wow. Maybe I just got lucky and he glitched, but if he does get stuck there, this is the solution for taking care of these guys. <laughs> this is cheap, I know. This is so cheesing to fight. But these guys, let's be honest, these guys are cheap themselves. They can drop the bloodstone shards or twin bloodstone shards. Obviously, you hope for the twin. Ah, uh, see, I'm trying to hit the, uh, I'm trying to fire off my gun, but it just, it just takes a while sometimes. There we go. Pick this up while he's down. Moon. Now he's going to explode into his red form. Come on, get him in the back. Oh, I didn't quite count. Oh, did you see how I tried to shoot him with the gun, but it wouldn't work? Again, constantly getting hit at the same time that you uh, interrupt. But whatever. That worked out for me, so I won't complain about it too much. We'll make sure to hit this uh, lamp right here. And that is very relevant, but uh, I don't know all the lore behind it. I'm not even going to pretend to. You come back to this area later when you actually traverse through it. This is like your way of getting here really quickly and, uh, you know, whatnot. Come here, buddy. Gotcha. Yeah, these characters almost always drop you a pebble. Or pebbles. You can also kill these boars, which give you a ton of souls. Or echoes. I keep calling them souls. I'm sorry, guys. Echoes. Echoes. There's more of these uh, big dudes to fight. And that's what we're going to go do. Go fight them. Because we're farming them, hopefully, for twin bloodstone shards, not bloodstone shards. Although, if they give us those, we can still use those. We can use those to upgrade our pistol, I believe. I think we've got one more upgrade on our pistol before we're complete there. Oh, actually, I've already come through here, haven't I? Yes, this area I've already done. I need to progress forward. We're going to get some odds and ends done in this episode. But good news is we've taken out a boss, so that's always an exciting kind of high point of any uh, blood bloodborne playthrough or souls playthrough for that matter I was under the impression that going through there led somewhere else I, I guess now I'm a bit confused as to what's what that opens later when you actually come through the level properly you'll actually run through here oh there we go again gestures just happening randomly Yeah, I seem to remember this leading somewhere else, not here. Man, I'm confused. There's a whole other area to this I remember. There being... Oh, he's going to hit me. Or not. Oh, 
my weapon phase through him, which happens quite a bit in this game, so get used to it. What the heck? Oh, there we go. Can he come in here? We'll find out the hard way if he charges. Go, 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 go! Oh, he got me at the same time. Can I still hit the body? No. Darn it. Four blood vials. And we got a bunch of echoes from him. Music almost sounds like a like a dark Gregorian chant. <gasps> that thingy, that thingy, that will give us upgrade materials. We gotta get it. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Are you gonna be that way? I don't know if they disappear like uh, the crystal lizards did or if they just stick around, but whatever, I got it. Exactly what we needed, twin bloodstone shards. It's a good idea in uh, any of the Souls games, including Bloodborne, to upgrade your weapon as quickly as possible um, because it, it does essentially produce for you the maximum benefit of anything you could do. I swear they're, they're I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'm just confused. I swear there was a whole other area where you could um, take out those big dudes. I feel like they like changed the area or something. There's a weapon down there, the Tonitrus, Tonitrus. I don't know how it's pronounced. There are a bunch of items down there. There are some tricky spots around here, some very, very difficult enemies, uh, very challenging encounters. So you can handle that however you want. Does, oh, it's not operational. Fine. Be that way. I gotta figure out how to get back to those more of those big dudes. Of course, we could just use that one... Um, yeah, see these guys? Yeah, well, whatever. Okay. I wonder... Nah, that would waste too many bullets. Oh, it did not do a jump attack like it was supposed to. Wow. Bloodborne fail. Bloodborne fail. That sucks to die when the game messes up. I'm not blaming the game. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm blaming the game because sometimes it just doesn't respond the way it's really supposed to. I think there was some little bit of environment or I bounced off the... the head of one of the dogs or you know some stupid little condition under which it decided it was just going to negate my um plunge attack which again it's just dumb yeah see they have different timings on attacks that look exactly the same so that makes them a serious freaking pain in the butt to fight i can't believe that didn't hit me there we go Twin Bloodstone Shards. Come here, buddy. No, no, no. You're going to have to come back here. I don't want that dude coming from around the corner at me. Oh, way off. I did that just to regain some of my uh, health there. You have to be very careful when they go... Oh, shoot. Oh, wow. I got lucky on that one. Notice that's a near 360 follow. Not quite, but nearly. And they can do charge attacks, so you gotta be careful. Like, Well, when I when I say charge attacks, I mean they can charge at you like that. We got him, we got him, we don't got him. Now we do. I kind of want to run back and pick up my souls, or echoes, so let's see where they're at. This is a little shortcut to get to him, too. Glad we opened it. Let's see if they're in an easy-to-get spot or not. What I'm hoping is that they're back on this platform before I jump down there. That would be nice. Yes, they are. Perfect. Booyah. Because those are, those are a good amount of echoes considering where we are in the game currently. 
The boar is also uh, restore each time you die or use the lamps. So you can farm them for echoes and for blood vials because they usually drop four. Which is cool. The fastest way to farm is to use uh, bold hunter's marks because it takes you back to the lamp versus going back to the hunter's dream and then back to wherever you were. However, this early in the game, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money buying hunter's marks. No one knows how to pronounce this. Hypogean, gowl, jowl, jail, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I wouldn't venture much of a guess. So, we'll farm a few more of these guys. Oh, you know what? Shoot, I'm sorry, guys. We gotta go right back to where we were. We can upgrade our weapon. Always upgrade your weapon as quickly as possible. Even if it takes a while, farm those um, upgrade materials as soon as you can. And then go upgrade. Because it makes it's always made a massive difference in the Souls games. I don't think it makes as much of a difference in Bloodborne as it does in, say, Dark Souls. But it's big. Um, like in Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Dark Souls 2, it's more important than leveling. Unquestionably more important in most cases than leveling. Unless you need to level like one more time to get the one more stat you need to equip your favorite weapon or something like that. Okay, now we're going to need eight more. So what I might do... Yeah, that's now on Twin Bloodstone charts. Okay. What I might look at doing... Saw Spear. Um... I might look at... I would like to do a Saw Spear playthrough eventually. I might look at farming off camera. So let's do another run or two. And then the rest will be done off camera. That way I don't take up the entire playthrough just farming, you know, during the camera. During the camera roll. While the camera is rolling. I can talk. Me speak English. Sometime. Um, farm twin B stone shards. Off camera. There we go. I say off camera. It's not really camera. It's just to capture. Uh, I'm gonna be. Um, I'm. I'm not gonna be able to work on videos for a couple days. So I'm gonna try to upload several of these episodes in a row and just have them all scheduled like I've been doing. But we shall see how it goes. Got him. And then what I'm trying to do here is get this ready before he gets all the way up. There we go. And then hit him with this before he recovers. There we go. Perfect. Yes, twin. That's what I want. I need eight. That's one. It's really hard to get these guys in the back. Um, there might be a spot. Oh, come on. You're doing that already? Just We just started. I think when he's swinging his sack around, I don't think you can interrupt it. I don't think you can stagger him out of that. See? Look at that, I still got some health from that shot, even though he clearly was already going down to the ground. And then let's use these, uh, let's use these echoes we have to go level. So, you can do two things here. You can farm the upgrade materials you need, both levels of upgrade materials, the, the starting level blood shards, or uh, bloodstone shards, and then twin bloodstone shards. Then on top of that, you can get echoes, especially if you go run and kill the boars. So if you want to maximize that run, instead of just killing the big dudes, the sack dudes, kill the two sack dudes, go kill the two boars. You'll, you'll see what I mean. There's two of them down there. At least two. There might be three. And then um, come back, level up as, as, and, and repair as soon as possible, and then go back and, and continue the farm. Buy the farm. And this is how it's going to go. This is how it's going to roll, guys. But again, I'm not going to show me farming eight twin bloodstone shards from these guys, because that would be quite repetitive. Surprisingly, when, when I put it up for a vote on my Foxio Games primary channel, which there'll be a link to after this, you'll see it in my outro, people requested that I keep in all the farming for my Dark Souls run. Um, I've done several of those. And uh, it was interesting because I didn't. I thought people would pretty unanimously agree to have the farming taken out. But no, it was the exact opposite. People generally wanted to farm it. Why did I shoot that? Uh, see, it's just, there's such, there's such a delay on trying to shoot your firearm. It's not like pairing at all. It's, it's too delayed. There's too much of a, a time difference between when you hit the button and when your shot goes off. And then those guys just do way, way, way too much damage. Their, their kick 
their barefoot kick, as I mentioned in one of the previous episodes, does more damage than the giant undead's huge axe slashing you. That's stupid. I mean, come on. Let's be reasonable here, people. Unfortunately, that attack has two timings on it. And they look nearly identical to start. So it's really hard to figure out which one he's doing. And that, I mean... Again, it's just... It's, it's too much. It's too much. I mean, you're trying too hard to make him difficult. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Uh oh, yep. They're gonna stagger. Now we got him. Did that kill him? Yes, it did. Awesome. Awesome sauce. As long as you can pick up your echoes, you essentially don't lose anything by dying. So, considering how close your echoes are going to be... Oh, jeez. I didn't plan on that happening. Let's see if we can get him with this. There we go. Come on! Got him. Twin Bloodstone Shards. Yay! How many do we have? We have two, so we just need six more. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll leave it at that. We're at about 46 minutes. And when next we meet, I will have upgraded this. Well, I'll have all the Bloodstone, Twin Bloodstone Shards, and we'll go upgrade this. And hopefully that'll finish us for Twin Bloodstone Shards. So I'll see you guys next time in Episode 9 of the Bloodborne Rifle Spear Playthrough. Don't forget to subscribe here, Foxio Games, everything. You'll see it in the outro. Later, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to follow my main channel, Foxio Games. You can click the logo at the bottom of the screen right there. Yeah, I also have a Patreon, so if you're one of those weird people that likes to give money to strangers on the internet, well then you can click the link in the description. I'm on Twitter and Facebook, but I definitely prefer Twitter, so please do follow me on Twitter. I love to interact with my viewers there. I also have two videos you guys can check out if you'd like. One is Fox Kinda Reviews, a comedy review series. This one's of Lords of the Fallen. And I also have Bloodborne Patch Notes for Patch 1.03. Three, so click either of those videos to go check them out as well, and I will see you guys next time.